Welcome to part two of A Reader's Guide for Lamentations. Last time you read the first 11 verses of chapter one, mourning over what has happened to Jerusalem. Today I'm going to introduce chapter one, verse 12 through chapter three, verse 20. Still mourning, but now the emphasis is on what God has done to Jerusalem. We will begin with a Hebrew note. We see at the end of verse 1, Jeremiah says, He, referring to God, has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. That word for footstool is the same word used for the Ark of the Covenant, which was in the temple in Jerusalem. That was the place where God physically dwelled among his people on the earth. So think about what this passage is saying. Jeremiah is saying, the way that God acted here isn't showing that he even remembers how he dwelled among his people in the past. It's showing the intense punishment that was sent for the Israelites. The historical background of this section of Lamentations is the same as last time, the destruction of Jerusalem. But remember that emphasis that God is the one who has sent this destruction to Jerusalem. And so we see that in our content section also. This section is all about God and what he has done. Specifically, as we see by that middle picture, the punishment that he has sent. And then Jeremiah points the finger at the Israelites. He says, this is really your fault. You've turned away from God and served false gods for hundreds of years. Jeremiah himself even warned the people about this before it happened. And it happened just as Jeremiah said. The people did not heed Jeremiah's warning about the destruction of ex and exile. They continued serving false gods just as they, as they had done before. And now their city is destroyed. Our key verse for this section, chapter 2, verse 17. The Lord has done what he planned. He carried out his word, which he commanded long ago. He tore down and did not spare. He let the enemy rejoice over you. He raised up the horn of your foes. God promised that he was going to do this to the Israelites if they didn't turn away from the false gods and serve him. The people wanted to serve their false gods instead, so God followed through on this promise of destruction. Take a look at this section and its phraseology to help you read through it. When you read God's wrath and lamentations, that's really talking about God's justice. People sin against God and God punishes them. That's God's justice. God isn't unfair in sending this destruction to the people. And when you read your prophets in Lamentations in verse 14, that's talking about the false prophets that were in Judah. These false prophets were proclaiming, God is never going to send his people into exile or destroy Jerusalem. He wouldn't do that. We're the people of God. Jeremiah was actually receiving messages from the Lord himself, giving promises that that's exactly what God was going to do. But these false prophets were just telling people what they wanted to hear. Then in Lamentations, the speaker and who is addressed. Just pay close attention as you're reading because the person switches throughout the book. Sometimes Jeremiah is speaking as the prophet to the people, and sometimes Jeremiah is speaking as the people speaking to God. You'll be able to tell a difference if you read closely, but just make sure you pay attention to that. Now we have an appreciation for the poetry, looking specifically at the intense emotions of lamentations and a little parallelism. For example, in chapter 2, verse 11, the poet is basically saying the same thing three times in, the, in a row, saying he is full of grief. But he says it in three different ways. First of all, my eyes are worn out with tears. Literally translated from the Hebrew, he says, my eyes are finished. They're completely done because of all the crying he's done. 
And that second one, I am troubled in my heart. Literally, from the Hebrew, this means there's boiling in my belly. Just that intense emotion that Jeremiah is feeling. And then that final one, I am emotionally drained. Literally translated, my liver is poured out. The liver for the Israelites is kind of how we think of our heart. So my heart is poured out because of all of this grief that I'm feeling. I can't feel any other emotions. What does this mean for me? Let's apply these things. First off, God is in control of all things, the good and the bad. God doesn't cause the bad, but he's in control of it. And we know because of his promises to us that he will work out the good and the bad all for our ultimate good to see us in heaven with him. He uses these things in Lamentations, the destruction of Jerusalem, to call his people back to himself. They haven't listened to his prophets, so maybe they will listen to this destruction and realize that they need to turn to God. So also God uses the hard things in our life to lead us to trust in him. We don't need to trust in anything in the world or any other people, but we need to trust in God alone. This section of Lamentations also helps us express grief or shame in prayer. Shame over sin or grief over trouble that we're going through. This section makes us realize that we need hope. We have trouble and shame and grief. We need a savior. And we know that God did send that savior to die on the cross and take away all of our sins. And by trusting in him, we receive the promise of eternal life. We'll see that more specifically in the next section in chapter 3. But for now, we read chapter 1, verse 12, through chapter 3, verse 20. Mourning over what God has done to Jerusalem. 